Today, we're gonna show you the best settings for the Sony a7 III. Just had, just had some coffee. Lots of it, tons of it. <laughs> Okay, cool, I'm calm, I'm coming down, we're good. Okay, let's begin. All right guys, so as you know, I just bought the Sony a7 III and uh, I'm gonna set up my entire camera and I'm going to capture the whole process. And so if you just bought yourself an a7 III or already have an a7 III and are trying to figure out the best settings for your camera, then go ahead and follow along as I set up this camera and hopefully it'll help you out. Oh, by the way, this video is sponsored by Skillshare, but I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later in the video, but for now, Let's get right into the best settings for the Sony a7 III. All right, gang, we're gonna try to do this as fast as we can because, uh, well, we all have places to be and things to do. Uh, not for me, not for me. Okay, uh, let's get started. So I'm gonna turn on the camera. And the first thing I'm gonna do is that I'm going to um, uh, reset the camera to factory settings by initializing the camera. So let's go ahead and do that right over there. Ah, here we go. Setting, reset, initialize, and here we go. And so the reason why I wanted to do this is because uh, for those of you that just bought the camera and are turning it on for the very first time, I know the Sony menu system can be a bit confusing. And so hopefully the step-by-step -step guide will help you uh, get started. Uh, okay, so obviously choose the language of your preference. Uh, set your area, date, and time according to your, uh, well, where you live. And uh, all right, here we go. So before we customize our settings, uh, the first thing you wanna do is that you wanna go to the top uh, dial of your camera and make sure that the top dial is set to M. We wanna do everything manually, so make sure to set it at M. Okay, once you're set, what we're gonna do, we're gonna click menu right over here, which is uh, the button right next to the viewfinder, and we're gonna go um, from the very beginning, from the first tab, all the way to the last, page by page. Uh, here we go. Okay, so file format. Uh, so this is in regards to photography, so uh, I like to shoot in RAW, uh, just more room to play with in post. Uh, we're gonna do uncompressed, please. If I ever wanna shoot JPEG, we're gonna do extra fine. Uh, we're gonna leave the image quality to 24 megapixels. We'll leave that there at 24 megapixels, aspect ratio the same, and the APS-C Super 35 mode. Okay, so this is a really cool feature that full frame Sony cameras have, particularly with the a7 III and the a7 R3. Basically, not only can you use the entire full frame sensor of these cameras, but you're able to use crop mode as well. So what this means is that you can actually use APS-C E-mount lenses on the a7 III, and when the camera detects that it's an APS-C lens, it'll automatically go into crop mode. So that's pretty handy, especially if you have uh, lenses that you use for your Sony a6500, a6300, a6000. This feature even works with full frame lenses in the event that you want to zoom in even further than the focal length of that particular lens. So for example, I use the Sony 24 to 70 G Master lens, and at the longest focal length is 70 millimeters. But if I use crop mode with the a7 III, that 70 millimeter focal length turns into 120 12 millimeter focal length, therefore increasing the range of that lens. So pretty neat feature, probably one of my favorite features on the a7 III and a7 R3, but we're gonna leave those settings alone and go to the next page. Next page, uh, I don't really touch. Uh, next page, okay, this is the drive mode. Um, I tend to like shooting uh, single shots. Uh, I don't really shoot bursts. Um, that often anymore. If you are a wedding photographer or a sports photographer, you may wanna set your drive mode to something a little bit higher, um, like the high continuous shooting mode. You can even determine the speed of it, whether it's low, mid, high, or high plus, but I kinda just stick to single shooting, but obviously, you do you, Cricket, you do you. Uh, okay, I'll leave that alone. Uh, memory, we'll get back to that in a second. Uh, that refers to saving whatever settings you just made into a custom preset, but we're gonna get back to that in a little bit. Uh, next page. Uh, don't really touch that. Don't really touch that. Uh, okay, focus mode. So for focus mode, I like setting it to um, autofocus continuous. It just tells the camera to keep on focusing on whatever you are focusing on. Uh, let's see, I kind of skipped the rest over here. Focus area, I tend to leave it wide for photography and for video. Um, for photography, it might be a little bit different because I may want to focus more on the center or maybe on a, on a specific zone. So if I want to focus more on the left of the screen or to the right or to the bottom, uh, then I can go ahead and do so. I can also pinpoint my focus by using the flexible spot and I can change the size of it to, to small or large, but for the most part, I set it to wide. And if I need to change the focus area, then uh, I can do that later. But for now, I'm gonna set it to wide because uh, this camera is pretty darn good in determining what to focus. Next page, uh, let's see, kind of leave everything else the same. 
Uh, for track sensitivity, I like setting it to responsive because uh, I found that to be pretty responsive. Get it? Uh. Okay, next page. Uh, pre auto focus, nope. Let's see, everything else, no, 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 no. Uh, no, 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 don't care about that. Uh, don't care about that. Okay, so I don't really use auto ISO that often, but if I do, I like to um, give it some brackets. So the, the first number is ISO 100. That's the lowest um, ISO that it'll go to. And over here on the right is the highest it'll go to. I find 12,800 to be a bit too high and I kind of just bring it down to 10,000. I find that to be somewhat usable. You might have to denoise it in post, whether you're doing, whether it's photography or for video, but I found that 10,000 is the max that this camera can do. Uh, okay, so let's see next. Uh, I just kind of leave the rest here. I don't really adjust too much. Uh, let's see this page, nothing at all. White balance, ah, okay. So uh, when it comes to photography, I do set it to um, just auto white balance. But when it comes to film, I do set it at a consistent uh, color temperature because it just makes it easier for you to color correct and color grade in post. But since we're kind of focusing more on the photography settings, we're just gonna leave it to auto for now. Uh, everything else is good. Okay, so picture profile. Um, I really like using picture profile one when it comes to photography and video. PP1 kind of gives you results that are good straight out of the camera. Uh, so I do like leaving it to PP1. Uh, when it comes to video, however, um, I do switch it up every now and then. Uh, sometimes I use PP1, sometimes I use Cine4, but lately I've been using um, the new HLG picture profiles and you can find that at a PP10. And uh, there are uh, several options if you uh, go into it and change up the gamma. There's the HLG, the HLG1, HLG2, and HLG3. Now, uh, not too sure about the HLG, but as far as HLG1, uh, from what I understand, uh, that's really meant more for low light scenarios. HLG2 is meant for broad scenarios, and HLG3 is meant for um, really bright conditions, like if you're filming at noon or in the desert. But out of those, I do find that HLG2 uh, seems to be pretty good. And basically what it is, it is a log profile uh, similar to S-Log3, but unlike S-Log3, you don't have to overexpose the footage and rely on your histogram to, to get the right exposure. You can actually just shoot it normally and use the actual screen to determine if the image looks good or not. And so that's why I like HLG2. So uh, sometimes I use that, sometimes I use PP1, sometimes I use Cine4, and sometimes I use uh, S-Log3. So for now, we're just going to set it at PP1. Uh, it's a good starting point in my opinion. Uh, okay, so let's go to the next page. Kind of leave that as is, leave that as is. Uh, peaking setting, uh, I do like to keep it at red if I ever go, if I ever shoot manual, just easier to see. Peaking level mid, that's totally fine. But lately I've been using autofocus a lot and the a7 III is, uh, is pretty good at being intuitive as far as autofocus performance goes. Okay, next page. Uh, Anti-flicker, I don't really use that. So now we are on page two, uh, which is the settings for video. And before we proceed, uh, let's make sure to change our mode on the top dial. So now we are set to manual, uh, which is really more for photography. And so what you wanna do is that you wanna switch your dial to the movie mode, which is this icon of a film reel right over here. And so once you're in movie mode, that will enable all the features for video. Okay, we're gonna take a little break because I want to thank today's sponsor and that's Skillshare. If you don't know Skillshare, Skillshare is this amazing online learning platform that has over 17,000 classes in the creative arts, business, technology, and a whole lot more. Now you can go online and browse through all their classes, but they also have an app, uh, which is my preferred way of learning. So being a YouTuber, I'm interested in things like business and entrepreneurship, and of course filmmaking. But lately I've been uh, taking classes in photography because well, photography and filmmaking kind of go hand in hand. Uh, right now I'm taking this really cool class by Tabitha Park and it's DIY backdrops, custom photography textures. It's actually pretty cool because it shows you how to do better overhead lighting for, for product photos or even things that I've never considered and that's using complementary colors in your composition. Basically, there's just a ton of classes that you can take and some of which are for free, but if you want unlimited access to all their classes, there is a premium membership for just under $10 a month. So if you are interested in Skillshare and you wanna check them out, then make sure to click in the link below because the first 500 people to click on that link will receive two months of their premium membership for free. Thanks Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Okay, so uh, now what we wanna do is we want to change the exposure mode uh, from program to manual because we, we want to do everything manually for video. Uh, over here for file format, uh, we're going to change the settings for 4K 
and shooting at 24 frames a second first. Okay, so now we are in manual exposure. Okay, so before I go on, uh, I'm going to make settings to film at 4K at 24 frames a second, and then I'm gonna go back and uh, change it to film at 120 frames a second in full HD. And then I'm gonna show you how to save both those settings in different custom presets so that you can switch from 4K to slow-mo in just a few seconds. So first, uh, 4K at 24. Uh, for file format, we are gonna go and choose XABC S4K. And for recording setting, we're going to shoot in 24p at 60 megabits a second. There is an option to film at 100 megabits, which essentially is a higher bit rate and more data packed into your footage, which gives you a little bit room to play with um, in post when you're color correcting and color grading. And I do use this option if I'm filming bigger projects, but since I mostly film YouTube videos, shooting at 24 frames at 60 megabits a second is plenty fine and also is much, much, much easier for my computer to handle. So keep that in mind. Um, let's see, S&Q settings, I don't really change because I just don't use s &Q. I just film in slow-mo manually, mainly because I want to control how fast and slow I want my footage to be in post, but that is a video for another time. Uh, proxy recording, uh, I don't really use too often unless I'm filming a bigger project and I want to create backups as I'm filming. And that's a cool thing about the a7 III is that it allows you to do that. You can assign to film your high quality images onto one SD card slot while at the same time recording proxies to the other. That's super helpful, especially if you want to edit on proxies and then later link to the bigger files for uh, for final export but also if you turn the proxy recording on you can actually send a video file to your phone whether you want to film high quality instagram stories or send preview clips to a client and so that feature is pretty handy but uh, I, I for the most part i just leave that off but you can always turn that on at any time uh, okay, so autofocus drive speed. Um, if I'm filming in 24 frames a second, I leave it as normal. If I'm filming in slow motion, like at 120 frames a second, then I'll set it to fast because if I convert that 120 frames a second to 24 in post, then I wanna make sure that my autofocus isn't too slow, which is what you'll see if you set your AF drive speed to normal or slow if you're filming in slow motion. Make sense? But for 4K at 24, we're going to keep it at normal. AF track sensitivity, we will set to responsive. Let's see everything else set fine. Uh, audio record level. Uh, I don't like shooting at 26. I actually like setting it to five. Um, keep in mind that I do film with a Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, and I found that filming at uh, audio level five is the right audio level uh, to film high quality audio without hearing too much of the, of the hiss coming from the preamps of the camera. Uh, okay, moving on. Uh, let's see, next page. Let's see, don't touch that there. Next page. Uh, let's see, nope. I'll leave that there, next page. Uh, zoom setting, ah, okay, so this is cool. Um, I like using clear image zoom because uh, it allows this camera to zoom in on a lens even if I'm using a prime lens. So just to be clear, it's not a digital zoom. Uh, the camera is actually zooming in on the sensor and so you don't see any image quality loss at all when you're using clear image zoom. And so, so that's pretty cool. Next page, uh, kind of leave the same. I don't really change any of that there. This page, I leave it. Okay, so custom keys. Uh, so basically, uh, this allows you to assign uh, most buttons all around uh, the a7 III to whatever you want. For example, you can set uh, the custom button three, which is right over here, to be your uh, white balance, or you can assign custom buttons one or two, which are the two buttons up over here, to be the, the focus area button or the audio level button, really whatever you want. Uh, we're going to leave that for now because that is obviously gonna be up to you. Um, and you can assign different um, buttons uh, for photography, for film, and for playback. Um, similar to that is the function menu button, which is this button over here that says FN. If you push this button over here, that opens up a grid on the bottom of your screen to have quick access to different features as well. But again, we're gonna leave that for now because that is all preference. Uh, the one thing I do change on this page is the dial setup. By default, the shutter speed is set over here and the um, and the f-stop is actually set to this dial right over here. Um, I'm kind of used to the Canon format. And so we're just gonna switch that around uh, where the shutter speed is gonna be near the uh, shutter button and the uh, aperture dial is gonna be right over here where my thumb is. So that'll, we'll just switch it up right over there. Okay, next page, uh, we're gonna skip through that. Obviously that's to pair with your phone, uh, but we'll skip through that for now. Uh, I think that's it for the video settings. Now on to the uh, miscellaneous setup. 
Uh, let's see, manual brightness, uh, I keep at manual. Although, pro tip, if you do set your brightness, your screen brightness to high, um, whatever you see on screen, if you're filming, say, indoors, will look more overexposed than it actually is, which is why I like setting it to zero. And I only set it to high if I'm filming um, outdoors. But at that point, I'm either looking through the viewfinder or I'm using a monitor, so I just leave it at zero. Uh, let's see, uh, volume settings, I kind of set to the highest because if I want to listen to a little bit of the playback, I do want to hear the audio even if it's for a little bit. Uh, next page, display quality on the screen. Um, hi, how are you? Auto power start time, uh, one minute's fine. Auto power off temperature, standard, we're gonna leave too high. Basically what that means is that your camera will still record even though the internal temperature of the camera uh, will start to get high. But unlike the a6500, a6300, uh, the a7 III or even the a7R III has never um, overheated when filming in 4K. Uh, let's see, everything else I just leave. I don't really use the touch operation on the screen. But if you do, then hey, you do you, Cricut. You do you. Here I kind of just leave as is. Next page, uh, let's see, record media settings. This is something I do wanna bring up and uh, basically that's assigning what you want to film um, in each SD card slot. So you can either decide to film uh, video on one and photos another, or you can film JPEGs or RAW on the other if you're more a photo shooter, or if you wanna record proxies and, and set your high quality settings to slot one and your proxies uh, to SD card slot two. Uh, for me, I like setting um, one SD card slot to film in video and the other uh, for photos, and uh, that will be that over here. Uh, it says sort, so that means one SD card slot will be photos and the other will be video. And so that setting really works for me. So we're gonna set that. And you'll see here on the bottom, SD card slot one will be for photos, which is this bottom slot over here. And SD card slot two will be for film. Um, I kind of want to switch that around. So we're going to set the priority of the recording media to slot two. And now you'll see that slot one uh, will be recording for video and slot number two will be for photos, which is right up over here. So again, that's just me. You decide what you want to do. You do you, Cricket. You do you. And I think, that's pretty much it. Okay, so now we've made our settings for photography and for video filming at 4K 24 frames a second, but now we wanna change the settings to film in slow motion. But before we do that, I wanna save my 4K settings to uh, a custom button. So in order to do that, we're gonna go to tab one on the menu screen and go to page three. And down over here, we're gonna go to memory. And uh, let's just double check the, the film settings that I've just made. Uh, I'm gonna click on menu. If you look up over here, uh, it says I'm filming in 4K at 24 frames at 60 megabits a second. Um, shutter speed should be um, double the frame rate. So uh, we're going to adjust that to 1 50th of a second. Cool. F-stop, I like to uh, film at the lowest F-stop possible and adjust from there. So we're gonna change that to 2.8. And uh, ISO, we are going to uh, change that to 100. Keep it consistent. And again, I can change that um, depending on what I'm filming and where I'm filming. And over here, I see it's set to auto white balance. Uh, like I said before, when you're filming something, it's, it's probably a good idea to film at a consistent color temperature, whether it's 5600 or 3200 Kelvin. So we're going to change that to uh, daylight because since most of what I film is in daylight or I use lights that have a daylight temperature. So we'll keep that at daylight. Uh, I can see here my picture profile is set to PP1, uh, focus area set to wide, autofocus continuous. And I think that's good guys. So we're going to go back to the menu, click on memory, and we're going to hit menu again because it's highlighted to one. So that means I'm going to save that 4K 24P setting to custom button number one. Done. And uh, you can actually have access to that on the top dial. Uh, if you switch the dial to number one right over there, that whenever I go to that, the number one, that will bring me back to the settings that I just made, which is 4K 24P. And so now I want to do the same to uh, my slow mo settings. So we are going to go back to the menu and we're going to go to the second tab because that is our video settings. And uh, we're going to change the file format to XAVCS HD. I'm going to film at 120p at 60 megabits a second. Again, if I want a higher bit rate, then I'll choose 100. If I want a little bit more room to color correct and color grade in post. But again, since I film more YouTube videos, uh, 120 at 60 is fine with me. 
Okay, so that should be good there. And oh yeah, let's change this uh, autofocus drive speed. Uh, like I said before, if you're filming in slow motion, then your autofocus drive speed should be fast because when you slow it down in post, uh, it'll look a little bit more normal than having it set to normal or slow, if that makes sense. Okay, so that's pretty good over here. Uh, let's double check our settings. So HD at 120 frames a second. Uh, shutter speed should be double the frame rate. So we're gonna change that to one to 50th of a second. And uh, everything else should be good. Again, I'll change ISO if I need to, depending on where I'm filming. But uh, I like those settings uh, so far. So we're gonna go back to the menu and we're gonna save uh, those settings to custom button number two. So we'll go back to page one, or we're gonna go back to tab one I'm gonna to go to page three, go to memory, and we're going to set those settings that I just made to custom button two. Cool. Uh, okay, so now that we've saved both the 4K and slow-mo settings, we are going to test it out, my friends. Okay, so on the uh, on the top dial, we're going to switch it to one and we'll see what it does. Uh, let me just autofocus, there we go. Okay, so now we're set at two, let's just change it to one. And theoretically, all my settings for 4K at 24 frames a second should be set. So if I look on the top screen, uh, it says here 4K, 24P, picture profile PP1, 150 a second. Yep, everything looks good. And now we're gonna switch it to custom button two. And then you'll see, let's go out of it. Boom, now it's set to slow motion. So again, if you want to film in 4K at 24 frames a second, you can. And then if you want to quickly switch to filming in slow-mo, just simply switch the dial on the top and you are good to go. Okay, so now I've saved both my 4K and slow-mo settings to my custom two buttons, but I'm gonna show you a third custom button that you can save your photography settings to. So now we're going to switch back to the M on the top dial. And now we're just going to readjust our photography settings because they were slightly tweaked when we uh, changed up our video settings. If you look in the bottom over here, you'll see that my settings were uh, were set for filming in uh, 24 frames a second. But since we're dealing with photography, let's just make the shutter speed a little more uh, uh, realistic. So let's just adjust it to 1 60th of a second. Obviously you can shoot higher or lower, but setting it at 1 60 should be fine as a starting point. And everything else should be good. Uh, let's see, my white balance, I do want to switch to auto since I do prefer that uh, in photography. And uh, and I think that's it, guys. And now I'm going to show you something really cool. So all those settings that I just made will be set whenever I switch the dial to manual. But if I go to number one, that will bring up my 4K settings. Let's take a look over here. Okay, we're good. And now if I go to custom button two, that will bring up my slow-mo settings. So let's double check that right there. Yep. But now, if we're bringing it up to M, that should bring it back to the photography settings that I just made. So back to M, let's double check, and boom, 1 60th of a second, auto white balance, boom ka -chow. And there you go, those are my best settings for the Sony a7 III. If you guys have any more questions about the camera itself or any other questions about filmmaking or camera gear, then by all means, let me know in the comments below or hit me up on Instagram or Twitter. I do love engaging with you guys, especially through the DMs and just hearing your stories of your progress and you growing as a storyteller. Connecting with you guys and hearing those stories just pumps me up. Well, thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe if you haven't, hit that notification bell, and I will see you all in the next video. Y'all, I just said y'all. I've been living in Texas for six months and I'm starting to say y'all. Y'all, y'all. Y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs> okay, bye.